Hi, it's Minda from My Online Training Hub. A little while ago, Mark Mayer, one of my Dashboard course members, wrote to Stephen Few asking for his feedback on the English government's official England School Inspectors Dashboard reports, which report how the school performed in public exams for the last three years. Now, if you haven't heard of Stephen Few, he's a leading expert, researcher and educator in data visualization techniques. Now, Stephen replied to Mark with this mock-up of how they could present the data, and this was done in Adobe Illustrator. So the line charts on the left are fairly straightforward, but this quintile chart is not native to Excel, and so Mark asked me if it could be done. Well, I'm pleased to say it can, but it takes a bit of jiggery-pokery. So let's take a look at how we can achieve the same thing in Excel. Here's my chart that I've created, and it, it's made up of three elements. These labels here are not actually part of the chart. They're in separate cells, so that's one element. We've then got these gray dots which mark out the quintiles. And these are fed from this data over here in gray. And then we've got our third element, which are the colored dots. And these are fed from the data in green. So let's start from scratch and we'll work our way through it. The first thing we want to do is highlight just the gray two gray columns for similar and all and it's we're going to insert a scatter chart just a regular scatter chart with just the markers and we need to right click and select data and switch our rows and columns so now we can see we've got our similar and all markers we'll add our actual values later on the first thing we need to do is change our formatting and make these quintile markers small and small gray dots like we've got here. So we'll delete the legend, just click on it to delete it. We'll delete the grid lines. Now we need to add, go up to our layout tab and add our grid lines for the primary vertical axis. We want major grid lines. That gives us our vertical lines. Now we need to change the scaling of the vertical axis. So we can double click on it if we've got 2010, Excel 2010 or onwards. If you don't, just right click and format axis. Now in here, we want to fix this to 0.2, which is our first quintile. We'll fix this to one, which is for 100%. We'll fix our major unit and we can leave the minor unit. That's fine. And that's all we need to do there. And then we need to make some adjustments to our horizontal axis. Select the axis, right click, it's going off the screen, but choose the last item in the list, which is format axis. Or if you've got 2010, just double click and it will open the format axis options. Now in here, we need to fix this to one. And what that's going to do is just get rid of these extra vertical lines and we'll fix this to two. We'll fix the major unit to one and the minor unit doesn't matter. We want to get rid of our tick marks. Oh, that was already none. And we don't need our axis either. And we can click close. So now we're left with our similar column and our all column. I can click on that vertical axis and press delete because I don't need that. We can make our chart a bit smaller because we don't need it so wide. Okay. Actually, I forgot to get rid of that line, so we'll go back up to Layout, Axes, Primary Horizontal, and then More Options. And we'll go to Line and choose No Line and click Close. And now it's gone. Okay, our chart's starting to come together. So now we can format our markers. Now, unfortunately, you have to do each set one at a time. So you can either click on it, double click to open it, or right click and choose Format Data Series. Just when you click on it, make sure both are selected. If you click twice slowly enough, you'll just select one. So double click to open it up. So now we go Marker Options. We're going to choose Built-in, choose the dot, make it a bit smaller, five. We'll change the fill to a light gray, and we'll get rid of the line color on the outside of the marker and click close. Now you need to repeat that for each marker. So I'll pause the video so you don't have to watch me do each one. 
Okay, so there are my markers all nicely formatted. We'll do a bit more formatting and select my chart and then format. And I'm going to remove the fill and I'm going to remove the outline. So now my chart's looking a bit more like the one above. I can make it a bit smaller. Okay, so now we've got our gray dots formatted the way we want. We want to populate our actual quintile data and that is for the bigger dots. But first of all, in order to make it easier, we'll copy this data down. And now you can see each of my actual dots are represented in the chart. And you can see the colors. And these colors were given to me by Mark. They are the colors that they use. So I've used them again here. So now I've got my data in for my actuals. I can copy it and I can click on my chart and press Control V to paste it. And now you can see that I've got my actual dots on top of the small gray dots. In fact, you can't even see some of the small gray dots. So now I just need to go through and format each of my actual dots. So I'm going to choose the built-in dot, which is already selected. I'll make it a bit bigger, number nine. I'm going to change the color. These are the colors that Mark's given me. And I'm going to put a light gray outline around each of the markers. And that's because this yellow one is a bit hard to see. So it just makes it stand out a little bit more. So we'll go through each one. Marker fill. This one's light green. And solid. A quick tip, when you're making these changes, you don't have to close down the format data series dialog box for each marker. You can just select it and then go up and continue to edit them one after another. So we'll go through this one's this yellow color and it's got a solid line as well. So I'll click on this one. There we go. And the line color, solid line. And one more. Okay, so now we've got our chart all done. We can just play around with the size of it. And all I've done to line up the text is adjust the row heights and the column widths and played around with the size of the chart to get it to line up to the labels. And you can see as I delete this data that I don't need, the colored dots disappear from the chart. One last thing you might like to do is right click and select data and just give each of these series the correct name. And the only reason really to do that is so that if you're trying to modify any of this data in the chart, you can easily identify which series relates to which dot. So we can see if you click on that, that this series is for the highest. So we can click in there and simply select that cell and click OK. And now it's called highest. We can edit the next one and see it's for row four. So we can click in there and click OK. And we can go through and do that for each of the series. And if I click OK now, I know I haven't finished it, but it's useful because if I now go up to my layout tab and drop down this list here, I can see my series is called highest and fourth quintile. And the ones that I haven't named have a generic name here, which isn't really much use to me. Whereas at least these ones, I know which ones they are and I can click on it and it will select the series for me. So it's always a good idea to make sure that your series are labeled correctly. Okay, so there you have the quintile chart in Excel using a scatter chart and modifying quite a bit of the formatting of it to make it look the way we want.